What's up everybody, this is DLL Cool J, and today in the lab we're going to go ahead and play around with the Ghidra development branch, specifically looking at the debugging branch to see if we can play with the debugger a little bit and figure out uh, some of its cool features. Full disclosure, we're just going to kind of click around and see what happens. I have no real plan here, so if you're looking to learn something crazy about reverse engineering, that's not what this is. We're just going to play with uh, the debugging branch, see if we can get it built fairly quickly, and uh, see what comes out of it. So with that being said, let's get started. One thing you're going to want to do before we go ahead and grab the latest version of uh, Ghidra and the Ghidra uh, debugger branch, we're going to want to grab a Gradle version greater than uh, 4.0. So go ahead and order the website, download Gradle, quick Google search away, and make sure that uh, you unzip it and put it in your path. Here we see I have Gradle 6.7.1, and then with that, we're going to go ahead and quickly clone Ghidra. So you can go ahead and reference all this documentation on their dev guide uh, to do a build. But after you clone Ghidra, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to go ahead, CD in, and then check out the branch you want. And I'm going to do a quick git log after I do a git pull just to make sure that I'm on the right branch. Looks good, we got Ghidra into debugger, we're on the debugger branch, okay, feeling good about this. Always want to check, because the uh, first time I did this, I accidentally rebuilt uh, the master branch, which is not what I wanted to do. So, here we're going to go ahead and run a nice little Gradle one-liner from the dev build guide, so please reference that. And notice that I didn't have my path set in this tmux pane, so I quickly reset that. And uh, this takes a minute, so we're going to fast forward that along, and we're going to come back in a quick second. And with that, we went ahead and built all of our dependencies. Isn't that great? The power of magic. So now we're going to go ahead and actually build uh, Ghidra itself. And this can just get co uh, accomplished with great, great old build Ghidra. And again, this takes uh, a decent amount of time, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, with movie magic, fast forward here. All right, now with that successful build, we're going to go ahead and CD into the build disk directory and unzip our newly built Ghidra zip file. And this is what you'd normally grab off of the Ghidra-SRE uh, org website. So let's go ahead into our folder, do a quick Ghidra run, and well, sure enough, we'll accept agree, and we see that we have one of the later builds. You'll notice that not everything's great, uh, up to date yet, so you see it's 9.2 there, but the splash screen was 9.3. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, not shared project. Let me go back there. And we'll just call it testing, call it a day. And, whoops, I'm about to import the file. There we go. So this is just a simple hello world file, nothing fancy at all. Quick build. I'm doing this on a Kali virtual machine, also just for context. And let's go ahead and open the code browser first. So the reason I wanted to do that really quickly is just to open up, uh, if you've never used Gator before, usually you open up binary, run some analysis really quick, and then you can see uh, the disassembly in the code view, and then also the decompiler on the right. If you right click, you're presented with a plethora of options. But the one thing that I really wanted to show here uh, is, is how you can move windows around. So go ahead and grab one of the windows, the top little title bar here, and you can just drag and drop these around and notice they become little tabs in the bottom. So you can do this to kind of start creating your own workspace. If you've never used Ghidra before, uh, you're, you're going to eat up a lot of your screen real estate pretty quickly. So this is just a nice way of you know reorganizing to whatever meets your workflow. Uh, everyone's workflow is different, just something to keep in mind. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and open up the debugger. Now notice that this is still in you know dev phase, so there's a chance that not everything is going to load. And during some of my experimentation and clicking around before this video, uh, I've I found that either I'm doing something entirely wrong, which is 100% possible, or you know there's still uh, there's still some things that need to get uh, pushed in to this branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my symbol tree really quick, and under functions, I'm just gonna find my printfs because again this is just you know a nice little uh, hello world program, 
And if I right click, I can start toggling breakpoints. So that's a nice feature right here. We can just have our nice code window, much like you would in other major uh, uh, disassemblers that also feature debuggers. We can go through and just right click or do hot sh uh, hotkey K. Here's our little main uh, function that loads the Hello World right into RDI, uh, followed by a printf. So we can also specify the type of breakpoint that we want. You see we have software execute read write and then also a read write. So let's go ahead and set this one to execute. And we can see that there is a breakpoint uh, menu as well. So one thing I noticed is that I could not get the registers or the modules uh, to load at all. So just one thing that I was having some trouble with during testing. So with our uh, decompile window over here as well, wherever we click over here, we'll also open in the code window, or the code browser rather, and we can right click and set uh, breakpoints from this view as well, which can be super helpful when you're going through some pseudocode and, uh, excuse me, you're going through some of the uh, uh, decompilation and you're trying to figure out what's going on there. So with that, we'll just go ahead and click debugger, debug, and then here we see a nice little GNU GDB prompt for us. Very familiar if you've ever played around with GDB. Going back to moving windows around, we can just click on that window, drag and drop it, and suddenly, you know, we're, we're working on our workspaces again. Getting our workflow all nice and set up. And on top left here, we see that we have one active uh, debugging session. And now I just went ahead and created another debugging session. So that's a nice thing to note here is that you can quickly jump around between multiple debugging sessions. And then you can kind of see the debugging objects get uh, presented below of wherever you are in the program when you're actually doing the debugging. Notice we still cannot uh, see anything getting presented on the register side. Again, I might be doing something entirely wrong, but I could not get that uh, updated for the life of me. And right clicking on the debugging objects pane, we can see that there are numerous debugging options as one would expect to resume, step into, or step over, exec, detach, kill. Another interesting thing here is that if you right click on one of these objects, you can display them in different ways. And over here you can kind of see the state of said breakpoint. And we can just disconnect if we so choose. And then create another one. And we'll see that those GDB sessions in the bottom corner just kind of keep adding on as tabs. And that's going to wrap it up for our Ghidra testing right now. Thank you for watching. I hope now you can go forth and uh, figure out some more of the functionality and more of the features. Please like and subscribe, share, follow on Twitter. Greatly appreciate it. From my lab to yours, this is DLL Cool J. I'll see you next time.